Hey, welcome to Gear Report. Hey, hi, I'm Jeff. AJ. And TJ. All right. We are, uh, we just finished up SHOT Show 2022 in fabulous Las Vegas. It was, it was a pretty awesome show, I think. While we were there, we saw tons of cool stuff. I have top five products. That's supposed to say top five cool products. Top five coolest products from SHOT Show 2022. You know what? I'm going to change that banner while we're waiting for uh, AJ to get our... Um, our agenda up for us on the other one so we don't get anything wrong. Top five coolest products. There we go. Behind the scene, folks. Right See, here. we tried to set it all up so this would go <laughs> smoothly, and then I screwed it up. All right. So I'm going to start us out talking about one from Zero Delta. It's called the Zero uh, One Pistol, and we've already known about that. It's a modular pistol that can be broken down. Uh, you know, I thought I had video for that one queued up here. It can be broken down and rebuilt as a subcompact, as a compact, as like a competition range pistol. You can do a ton of different things, reconfiguration with it, uh, without tools. So that was already cool. They have updated that taking it to the next level the new version actually you take that uh pistol let me see here um bear with me folks i'm going to bring up some pictures i know i know i apologize have a tab. <laughs> usually has a tab open for i i have a bazillion tabs open so i can show you everything no i want the window for picasa so i can show you the pictures that we're looking at here. Um, all right, so we had the pistol itself and it turns into a rifle. You can see the pistol part right here. The hand grip from the pistol, you take the pistol uh, slide off of it and the very front extension, now it slides under this cutout in an AR type, an AR-15 type receiver. So you can use a standard AR-15 upper. What what? What uh, caliber would you put on it first? I'd go with 300 Blackout. Yeah. I really like that caliber. I'm still messing around with it, seeing what it can do. And right now, it's at the top of my list. Good choice. What would you do? Oh, 556. 556. Five, okay. Five, so then you have that option. You can use with this lower, you can use any standard, you know, typical AR 15 type upper, swap it out, put different that you want on it. You can pull it apart, turn it back into a pistol. I thought that was really cool. So I thought we would uh, share that with you guys. Now, moving down the list, AJ, what do we have next on the list? 5150 rifles. They have their Evolve rifle pinless AR. And it is an engineering feat in which you can attach and detach your upper on your AR-15 without any tools and without any tents. Um, what it uses is a cam locking shaft. I want to get the pictures pulled up. It looks similar to your safety selector. It's a little bit further up and closer towards the buttstock. You flip it, that dislodges the rear pinless connection point, and then you just cantilever it over and pop the front apart and you're ready to put your new upper receiver on. That was a fantastic description as the guys are sitting here shaking their heads like, why does he not have this sorted out? I, our tech guy is horrible. I know, he, you can't get good help here. I, I swear I thought I already had this uh, queued up and ready to go. I, I must have closed it by accident. What, what day did we get those pictures? See, this is the other kind of fun thing as as we're running around the show taking pictures all the days run together we've sorted them by by day you think you think mm -hmm. they're lower I, I thought it was up here somewhere but you're getting a preview of all the other things we saw cobalt kinetics is back different company now um here is the 5150 yeah. booth at least you get to see that if you like uh mma that's uh the famous randy couture that you saw in the background there, I think it may have been another day that we went and saw that one. So I'll tell I'll tell you what I'll do for you then. Um, I'll tell you go to fifty one fifty. It's the number five one. Then spell out fifty f i f t y. 
Um, put that in your Google search and you will find, um, you'll find the website. All right. Crystal, hey, how you doing? All right. Yo, gun snob, brother, come on. You know we do one yo, three yo's on this show. You, you, you're you're kind of letting us down here. All right, we'll stop the screen. And, uh, oh, no, <laughs> our itinerary went away. <laughs> we have no idea what we're talking about next. Yeah, no. ne next item on the list was TJ. What What's next? The, uh, what are we Fox no. unit, Fox unit, semi-automatic. The non, non, semi-automatic. Non That's what I meant. Non-semi-automatic. Right. So you, you had a good discussion with him on this. I did. You want to talk about uh, what what the big deal with this is? Uh, he developed the rifle for people who live in un, uh, uh, not free states, uh, <laughs> to where it's, you can use your you can use your upper. It's just it's a lower receiver. You can use your upper. It takes AR parts, but it it'll fire a shot right and then it won't it won't reciprocate so if you get and, and, and the the side effect or the end result is you get better accuracy because the bolt's not going back and forth so you just have to charge it every time um so it's a it's a non semi automatic but it takes your well, whatever you, upper you say you have to charge it every time but i mean i went pretty far you don't have to pull it to charge like it locks back right so you can use a bad lever and drop mm. the bolt yeah. so you shoot it right. it holds the bolt back so it makes it effectively a, a single shot and you may have noticed the uh this the hero image for this featured the side of their upper the the f unit i wonder what they mean by that i don't know i don't get it i think it's fox mm. unit but yeah, non semi-automatic i gotta be honest we walked by them at the range uh, at, at the big range day on Monday, and I thought, non-semi-automatic AR, this is stupid. <laughs> and we didn't stop. We didn't look yeah. at it. We didn't shoot yeah. it. We didn't learn anything about it. And then um, Deb from uh, all the different women's shooting groups, we had breakfast with her on Wednesday, and uh, and then we're walking through the show floor later, and she says, oh, guys, come with me. And, <laughs> and we go over to Fox Unit, and... Uh, She's thought, like, hey, the gear report guys are here. You got to show them what you have. It's really neat. She was so excited. She was. She is one of the consummate industry professionals who who knows more than we do. So I was like, ooh, she's excited. Maybe trouble. we screwed up that we That's didn't look at this one. <laughs> uh, so we talked to the dude running the company and really super cool guy. He reminds me of an actor that I've seen on TV. I can't remember the name now. Uh, Dom DeLuise's son. What's his name? <laughs> I can't read. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Go look him up. And uh, and that's who he reminded me of. And as he described it, I'm like, oh, wait a second. You know, uh, like you take your shot. It holds the bolt back. You only have one impulse coming back, not the bolt slamming forward. It's easier to keep on target, like if you're hunting, maybe. And then you use a bad lever. You yeah. just drop the bolt again yeah. and go. Uh, but it gets you around some of the communist state laws where they don't let you. Um yeah, kind of true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Truth hurts. Okay, so um, ASA, Advanced Shooting Analy Analytics, they have something, I believe they're calling it this disruption. And again, if I can get to the correct screen to show you. I know, so I know. Now, the coordinated thermal expansion rifle chassis, from what I remember, they engineered it in such a way that as it warms up, there's no stress points in the rifle yeah. causing your shots to even, go even off the, zero. The it's pretty, I thought it was ingenious what they did. Absolutely. And, and you know, like it said, the, the being very highly based on um, – analytics you know uh it's very scientific they've done a lot of modeling and uh, and you'll see I, I figured out one of the problems when i'm having trouble finding images i opened them as images and for whatever re whatever reason the Streamyard tool that we use to stream doesn't see that program that like the windows image viewer so i'm like i know they're here why can't i find them well oh, yeah, we'll get there eventually yeah well, you'll see it i'm pretty sure that we saw them do we see them on Tuesday? Yeah, that's where I'm looking. It was Tuesday. Super, super cool looking chassis. I really want you to see it. Oh, it here they are. There it is. Yeah, we can see a bunch of pictures. This way we can see a bunch of pictures of them. There you go. Uh, with their chassis. So you can see uh, what the, the big deal here, thermal expansion of dissimilar metals 
and dis, and dissimilar thicknesses of metals. And, and I'm going to bastardize the description here, but you mix all these different parts together in a gun that, that have different thermal expansion rates and you cause deformation and tension in, within the firearm as the temperature changes. If you shoot it when it's cold, if you shoot it when it's hot, especially if you shoot it a lot and it heats up and things expand and contract at different uh, rates. rates, then you get deformation that can change your point of aim, point of impact, the relationship between the two, something like that. John, I apologize. I'm sure I've bastardized everything about your product. <laughs> so what I would say is go go check out ASA, uh, learn about the product directly from them. Uh, we're gonna have them on the show. We're gonna have many of these brands, actually, we're gonna have on the show to talk about their products. And you can see, Plus look at all the, looking. all yeah, of the look awesome. <laughs> of, of adjustments and incredibly well machined and made and just a absolutely beautiful work of art that's also, you know, really scientifically based. I could be incorrect, but I think he did mention that they also machine the tubes for the scope yard on the rifle. Yeah. That's it it, it kind of looked like it, yeah. yeah. And I don't believe you for a second. You could not be incorrect. <laughs> well, we talked to we talked to him a couple years ago. He had the picture of the uh, heat image and, and mm -hmm. the everything expanded the same even the really? scope tubes because you know he said he showed the picture of like a normal scope tube and it was all like expanded out one of them was out out of the heat for a while. Mm. Yep. Okay. So now we're going to go back to uh, range day. Oops. Let's go here to range day. And uh, <laughs> so as you can see, I'm just going to pictures up there the whole time. Well, awesome. I know that this is going to turn out to be the easiest way to do it. And you get some background. If you see anything that while we're scrolling by, you can go ahead and mention it. I, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you, we're coming back to this one. This is our honorable mention we're going to come back to. Um, if you ever wondered if TJ is just the eye candy or if he actually works, you can see plenty of pictures here. <laughs> dude. The dude works. Yeah. He, he works it pretty hard. Clover Tech there. All right. Uh, I try to work it there. So here we the technical go. side, I don't have to do this. Stuff. Here, here's here's what we're looking for. Um, boom. 8.6 blackout. This is crazy. 8.6 by 43. Uh, do you remember what cartridge this is based off of? The case. The case. It's a cut down. 6.5 Creedmoor. So mm -hmm. we're Creedmoor. using standard, you know, the bolt you use for a 6.5 Creedmoor. Um, I, I, you, using that, uh, they cut the chamber a little different. They shorten the case a little bit. They put, uh, in this case, a 300 grain subsonic. This is like a three, 338 Lapua round, basically, I think, put in a 6.5 Creedmoor case. Uh, so this is made for suppression, kind of like the 300 blackout uh only it's a bigger you you run supers at this 185 grain gmx good hunting round that's a 300 grain <laughs> hollow point boat tail there uh, even i mean honestly they threw a couple supers in but we'll, we'll put a video up at some point even the supers sounded uh yep. fairly quiet i was impressed yeah. so you'll see uh that we shot a bolt gun and we shot uh, the, the, the the production ammo isn't out yet. So it's a coordination between what companies? Q, Faxon, Faxon, and who's making the ammo? Gorilla. Gorilla. All right, you have passed the test. Very good job. <laughs> Wait, All right, we keep our jobs. Right. So a lot of the there's no production ammo available yet, as far as I know. So everything we shot was all you know, kind of test loads. It was, it was, it was deceiving when we walked by because I was like, "Oh, that's going to kick like a mule." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So anyhow, eight mm -hmm. point, exactly eight point six blackout. What's the point? It's made to be suppressed. It's throwing a huge round. They were getting pretty good speeds out of it. Yeah. We were shooting in pretty close, two three hundred yards, yeah. I think, at the most. Um, I talked to Pat at Faxon uh, a couple of days later, and he said, yeah, after everyone cleared out, we were, we were throwing rounds all the way out to 1,000 yards, and it really wasn't a big deal. They had to change you know, their point aim a little bit for, to, to account for a bullet drop, but they, they still had enough speed on the rounds that they were getting uh, pretty good hits at longer distance. So I can't wait for this eight points. Dude, you can watch Fail Army on the TV <laughs> when we're done. You, you need to stop looking over there. Um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, he's showing pictures. He's not showing us. Yeah, here he is shooting a TJ shooting the bolt gun in eight point six Creedmoor, and then um, you know we went. Oh, there's some other stuff. And then we went and uh, and they shot shot the semi as well. So pretty pretty cool stuff. Um, Very little recoil, but oh no. really? Did I forget to share the screen while I was doing that? He's a mess. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do that again. Okay, dude, 
what is wrong with our tech guy here? No, nope, not that one. It was a long, long week. I'll give, I'll we haven't had coffee this morning. Yeah, we haven't had we coffee. We haven't had coffee this morning. That's what's going on. That's exa- <laughs> Dude, that is exactly what happened, isn't it? All right, there's our Picasso window. Come on, share. Okay, so there's the bolt gun. Is it working now? Yes, it is sharing the window. I sincerely apologize for that. And and we only have one screen up. We're not, we should be monitoring. I guess if someone said anything, we would have seen it there. There's the ammo. There's the semi-auto. We saw the bolt gun earlier. Here are the cartridges. Cartridges I was talking about, 185 grain GMX, the 300 subsonics. Really super cool there. And that was uh oh, you shot the Maxim. The, their 6.5 Creedmoor. I forgot that. I mean, I shot that too. You That's did. awesome. I'll have to look at the pictures. I forgot about that. That's another real cool one. Uh, I think I'm going to get one of those to review here uh, in a bit. So stay tuned for that. All right. That covered all of our uh, top five. And now I want to scroll back up here and talk about this bad mama jamma. Um, all right. We, we're still on the screen. Yes, we are. Good. This is from uh, Bushmaster. Bushmaster. We're going to have Sun, who is the CEO of Bushmaster. We're going to have him on our live show here uh, sometime in the coming weeks. We haven't scheduled yeah. it yet to talk about Bushmaster as a company, you know, being sold by Remington and how they basically restarted, relocated to uh, a, a different state, different location, started over rebuilding the brand. They came out with this BA-30, which is a straight pull, straight pull bolt action rifle. Um, this prototype that we shot, honestly, it, it shot fine. Operating the bolt was a little tricky. They got a lot of good feedback at range yeah. day. This one has a curved bolt handle that looks kind of like a regular bolt action rifle. You want to pick it up and move it, but you don't have to. So I think they're going to come with a straight. They, they took that feedback. It's going to come out straight. They've got a little bit more tweaking to do before they really get out in production with this. But conceptually, yeah, see, there's a big deal. You see all the marks on the side where people were dragging their fingers. So like, oh yeah, that's bad. So it's gonna be a straight bolt, I think, or at least an option for a straight bolt and uh, or straight bolt handle. Um, it was a little hard to pull back at times. I think it was a dirty gun for being on the range, uh, but also kind of a late, late development prototype. When the real models come out, I expect it to be a little slicker, easier to run. Really neat concept. Um, that charging handle, the, the bolt handle on that was Andy, wasn't it? Yeah. The, you check it out, put on the yep. other side. Yeah, exactly. I thought that was really cool. Um, I like straight pulls. The uh, K31 is probably my favorite <laughs> bolt rifle. So I was pretty excited to see this. Uh, we will see uh, how this progresses when it becomes available. All right. Did we go over the Motor City Armaments? No, we skipped that. Oh, it got highlighted over there and I missed it. This one was really neat. And I thank you so much for bringing that back up. That would have been Tuesday that we saw them, wasn't it, TJ? Yeah. All right, so right. we're just going to leave Picasso up so we can scroll to the picture. See everything we, we, everything we <laughs> saw. 10, I feel like machine guns. Bro, I'm mm-hmm. telling you, machine yeah. guns everywhere. <laughs> All my Humvee people have got to be like, oh, my God, machine guns. And it was funny. I'm walking around. Most people are looking at machine guns. I'm spending as much time looking at the mounts and, <laughs> yeah. and everything. See what the NSM number is. <laughs> to figure out, you know, what I can fit on the Humvee. So anyhow, lots of machine guns. And then uh, we went over there to the other areas, kind of the new product area, basically, uh, where, where they had newer brands. This looks kind of snazzy, right? You can see some red, some lightning cuts, it looks like. But wait a second. Why does this upper, the rail, look like it's kind of monolithic, but then you have red underneath? Like, what's going on here, right? So we walked by this, and they were busy. They were were talking to people, and I just kept looking and stopped and was like, what is, I couldn't figure out what I was looking at. So so we walked back around, waited in line to talk to them, and here's why it looks so weird. The upper receiver is a sleeve that fits inside what you might call a monolithic kind of upper shroud and rail. I'm making up terms because this is brand new. 
And, uh, and I'm sure that they had like real terminology that they told me. I, I don't remember what it was. We have a video that's in the editing queue. I'll get that published here uh, at some point and you'll hear it from the horse's mouth. Um, but there you go. Yes. The receiver pulls out. So uh, do you see any advantage to doing it this way? You, either of you, why, why would this be neat? Like a good idea. Or you just switch out uh, rails with different optics. Yeah. So we Easy got, enough. we got oh. irons on here. Oh. And then the other one has got a red dot on it here. <laughs> so if you want to go from iron to a red dot, or you want to go from a short barrel uh, you know, you have the, the inner portion here could have, you know, a short barrel attached to it. Um, so if you keep that barrel, then you could switch out what goes around it. So you have a longer rail with a big scope, a shorter rail with a red dot or with backup sights or whatever. However you want to do it, real easy to switch them out. Um, you take the two screws out on each side, and those are what hold it all together. Yeah, and it, works together. On, it works on it. Yeah, pinches it. That's awesome. Phillips head screws, or do you need a hex head? I believe it was like a little Allen key, yeah, kind of but I don't, you know what? Uh, oh, oh. Was that wasn't zoom. zoom. Yeah, let, let's see if we can see what is in there. We're going to answer this question or not because they it's had it out. <laughs> it was just free floating. Yeah, they free had floating. I, I thought they, I think they had bolts, oh, screws in one of them. Yeah, like a top. Yeah, you get what you pay for here, folks. Yeah, sorry. sorry. Oh, that there one, you go. That, yeah. That's the one that had the. This is how so you do. see what this happens with that coffee how people. Do. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you. And, yeah, a little uh, Allen head. Yep, little Allen bolts holding that in. That's right. nice. You won't strip them then. Because hmm. in, uh, in theory, challenge, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> challenge accepted. Yeah. yeah, I mean, listen, give me a couple days. Uh, All right, Ob. We didn't see you much at SHOT Show, dude. I don't know why you were no, being so remember, scarce. remember he walked right by us. We were like, hey, what's up? And then just right, him and right. Him and Sarge just kept Sarge C4, by. an obnoxious one, walked <laughs> this far <laughs> from us, right in front. And I'm like, oh, just walk right by. Don't say it's, anything. It's not like you, it's not like and they did. They didn't even look. Didn't yeah. even acknowledge we were there. Um, who the hell is he talking to? Gentlemen? <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Rob. Good to see yeah. you. Um, gentlemen, that's that's bizarre. Yeah. I thought you knew TJ at least. Um, yeah. Anyhow, thank you. We, we appreciate it. Hope this was interesting to you. So much for making this a five-minute video. 22 minutes, you got our top five. Uh, zero Delta, zero one. 5150 rifles, the Evolve pinless. I'm looking at the, the cheat sheet over here. That's why I'm not watching, watching Fail, fail Army. Army. He's watching, <laughs> He's watching <laughs> Fail <laughs> Army on the TV. Now yeah, yeah, we're on the street. <laughs> I'm reading our notes. Uh, Motor City Armament. I apologize. I skipped you in the list. We had you highlighted so we wouldn't forget and my squirrel brain missed the highlighted one for some reason. Motor City Armament. They call it the Mod 1, I believe. It's an AR upper receiver and rail system, you can go check them out. They just, the day we saw it was the first day they made this available for people to see publicly. So uh, I'm gonna get that video up that fully describes their whole system as soon as I can. Uh, Fox Unit, the FU, non-semi-automatic, <laughs> FU baby, <Yeah. laughs> non-semi-automatic uh, AR type rifle. The ASA Advanced, Shooting analytics disruption. It's kind of hard to say. It's no a mouthful. Yep. It's the, yeah, here's a few more. The coordinated thermal expansion rifle <laughs> chassis. John, brother, you're brilliant. I love your work. Come up with a shorter name. Oh, dude, you're the CTER. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Again, you get what you pay for, it, right? We talked about the Zero Delta. I, I made these little banners, forgot to put them up when we talked. 5150 rifles, Evolve rifle. Dude, I need some coffee. I have coffee in there. Remember, I stashed some coffee in the you fridge did. before. We can go get that. Fox unit, non-semi-automatic rifles. Yep. Where, <laughs> see, John, your name is so long, everything. Has I had to scroll. scroll it across the bottom. <laughs> All right. There we go. All right. Stop scrolling. 6.8 black. Uh, we didn't do a banner. 8.6, dude. Yeah. Coffee. <laughs> um, 8.6 blackout. Um, we're going to get a barrel from Faxon pretty soon and build something, or I, I don't know what we're going to do. I'll, I'll talk to Pat we'll at Faxon. We'll figure that out. Can't wait to play with that one. That's going to be good. That, who knows, that may end up with Caleb, our hunting editor, because dude's a deer slayer. 
And uh, we're out of deer season, but you've got coyotes. I bet he could thump some coyotes with that round. That would be interesting. Yeah. Didn't have a banner for um, for Bushmaster. Sorry, son. Um, son being the CEO, not like I'm not. A, <laughs> I'm not apologizing to my son, who's too good to come to shop with me. Apparently, uh, I'm not bitter about that, Randall. It's okay. Um, all right. Any last words from you guys? It's yeah. a great show. Yeah, it was fun. It's probably yeah. one, of, one of the best ones I've been to. So let, I, I know we don't want to keep going. We have got to get a oh, car yeah. and get to Battlefield Vegas. We're going to shoot some video with them. You'll see a video, probably a couple videos, maybe yeah. an article coming up on that pretty soon. If you haven't been watching along on Gear Report, like gear-report.com, if you haven't been on the website watching, then uh, Andy Parrish Outdoors. Oh, my God. All the celebrities are, like, tuning in and following so and commenting on us today. Yes. This is this is making my day. Um this is the top five coolest. We have put together a list of uh, like tech innovation, most innovative. Yeah. We're, I don't know when we're going to do that. We may do that live from Battlefield Vegas later. It's hard to say. We may fire it up and have a discussion just about SHOT Show in general to talk about things like the mask mandate that was, I did not put a mask on the entire time. And it did cause a little bit of consternation from some of the security <laughs> people, but I was like, Yep, not doing it. But thank you so much. Uh, so we can talk about that. We'll, we may talk about uh, just the show overall, the light attendance, the new okay. facilities where it was all spread out. Lots of cool things to talk about. AJ and I, we need to get to, we, we probably need to do a live some point and talk about the AIM Expo, the mm -hmm. American International Motorcycle Expo that we went and covered as well. Who's that guy? That's pretty awesome. Wow. We got all kind of people saying hi this morning. We really appreciate it. Thank you for, for tuning in. Um, I need to put pants on. It's, it's that was TMI, wasn't it? It's no, I'm still story. wearing my shorts here in the house. We need to get ready, get our gear packed up, <laughs> go to Battlefield Vegas, where we're going to blow some shit up. I think we're playing with tanks today. Um, Ooh, last time we did flamethrowers, and you shot the, the, the Maw Deuce. Deuce. I shot the minigun off of a Humvee. We rode around in the uh, APC. We, we shot artillery. Yeah, Never Bofors, shot artillery Bofors. before we shot the Bofors 40. We watched the helicopters coming and going. You can, at Battlefield Vegas, you can go up, fly around the helicopter, and shoot a minigun <laughs> from the air. It sounds, good. It sounds cool from the ground, too. It does. Yep. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, uh, we're going to just go to the indoor range that's behind Circus Circus off the Strip in Las Vegas, where I suspect we may shoot some stuff. I don't know. I know we're going to spend a lot of time doing Humvee stuff, which TJ's going to be bored. I know we're gonna, we're hanging out with Scott, the tank guy at Battlefield today. We may actually help with some tank restoration. I don't know. We're going to see what happens. you have to check back for the video on that. Um, until next time. Come on, get your finger in here. AJ, <laughs> come on, make an effort, brother. Good job. All right.